Hi, I'm Charlie Capola, the only mine of all the boom tattoos and owner of Low Side Tattoo. I'm also a keen multi species angler. Over the coming year, I'm going to be taking my friends from studio to bank and to boat in search of the best the UK has to offer. From tattoos to tactics and inks to hook links, I am the illustrated angler. Well, welcome to this, the first episode of the Illustrated Angler. Uh, today we're going to have Mike Salisbury in the chair with us. He's a good friend of mine, established catfish angler and professional angling coach. Uh, this is actually a pair of tattoos that we started the first half of a couple of months ago. Uh, catfish on both forearms. One sort of paying homage to uh, a mandarin catfish Mike had last year. Uh, and today it's just going to be sort of standard Welsh coloration. Uh, the match's going to be quite shortly, so I'm going to get my stencil printed, get my machine set up, and be ready to rock. Right, well, I'm here with Mike. Um, we'll be starting the tattoo shortly, but before we do, there's all the noise and machines and things going on. We're just going to take a couple of minutes and have a quick chat, just to talk about Mike's caprichin and the reasons behind us getting his tattoo, and well, anything else we want to talk about, really. Um, well, really, we're here today to sort of commemorate your love for catfish and the, what the species means to you as a whole. Um, yeah, that's right, yeah. You know, and we actually started this. Well, we started the first half of this pair of tattoos a few months ago when we done the other side, which was a sort of a homage to the Mandarin catfish or Manda Jim, I think as it's known. Yeah, that you had right. last summer. Yeah, um, it was from a venue called Crow's Heath Fishery, uh, mm. which is nearby in Essex, and uh, it's actually the largest Mandarin catfish in the UK. Right. Okay. Um, I call it at sixty-six pounds, right. which. Um, what was a you know a great way to catch it out? It has been larger, but as I said, it is the, it is the largest in the UK, so it was a very memorable fish to catch. Yeah, of course, I and mean, yes, an impressive looking fish. Um, but it's not the only catfish, or even the largest catfish you've caught. No, um, I, I have caught them slightly bigger. I've caught um, a 68 mm -hmm. in the UK, which is, which is my biggest in the UK, yeah. and then uh, over in France, I've had a seven pound catfish right. as well, which um, by today's standards, it, it's it's not huge as far as that species can get but yeah. that's really what sort of gave me the bug of, of uh, going and targeting cats because I, I, I think by and large they're probably my favourite species at the moment. Right okay yeah just because of the size because of the strength because of the way they go anything yeah. in particular? Yeah I think it's just the fact that, that they're just so brutal yeah you don't get a fight like that out of any freshwater fishing, no. certainly not in this country. No, of course not. No, and you certainly don't get them growing to those sizes no, either. No, um, and I just like the fact that they're, you know, the essentially an apex predator. Yeah, of course. That they're not scared of anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully we're going to get into a bit of fishing ourselves soon. Try and yes. Get a few cats on the bank. Yeah, definitely. There's there's quite a few uh, decent waters in Essex. Yeah. So as far as catfish go, I think we're. We're very lucky in that respect because yeah. there's probably the, the biggest concentration of catfish waters in the UK in this county, I think. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll definitely have to give it a go soon. Cool. Right, we're going to get on with Mike's tattoo now, uh, and hopefully, next time we speak to you, we'll be somewhere in the bank. Weeks on, Mike's tattoo is nicely healed, and we're here at Par Fisheries in Brentwood with the intention of putting one of them on the bank. Big, nasty Welsh catfish. Um, 
we've been a little bit brave of venue choice. It's by no means a runs water. Um, there's a few cats in here, and the ones that are in here are a decent size. So we figured if we're going to get one of these fish, we want a big one. Um, I think anything sort of 40 plus is sort of uh, feasible. Not not easily doable, but feasible. Um, and the other reason we've been brave is this is the first time either me or Mike have stepped foot on this fishery. So we've got very limited knowledge. We're literally turning up as any angler would, um, not pre-booked these swims, not really done any more research than anyone else would do. Um, yeah, so the idea is we're gonna, we've, we've had a little look, we've picked a few swims that we like to look at. We're gonna have a few casts, see if we can find anything worth fishing to and sort of go from there. Um, few different things we're going to try between us, a few different baits, a few different rigs, tactics. Uh, yeah, I mean, anything else to add to that, Mike? Anything else you think we need to cover? No, I think I think we've pretty much got all bases covered. We've got um, lots of different setups to try, like we've got the free lining spam rig, we've got live baits, we've got leeches, we've mm -hmm. got pellets, pretty much everything you can imagine to target these fish we've got. It's just a case of whether they're in the mood, and uh, as we know, catfish are notoriously moody fish. It's, it's the age-old so, problem with yeah. cats. If they're not feeding, you just will not catch them. Um, but I, you know, I think we're in it. we've got as good a chance as anyone. Uh, there's not many people on, which is a good thing. Um, there was just before we got here, which you know might kill it off for a little while. We're not really sure yet. But yeah, I mean, there's every chance we could get a real big fish and uh, hopefully get it out for the camera for you. Um, my personal PB is a little bit smaller than Mike, so I've, I've got to beat 50 pounds. So if, we can, if I can get that, I'll be over the moment. But uh, yeah, so let's see what the session brings. Let's go for it. through the rig I'm using. This is the luncheon meat rig and it's uh, a rig that I've used over the last year to great success. I've had my UK PB on it and also the big mandarin catfish from Crow's Heath Fishery last year. It, it really is quite simple. It just consists of about two and a half, three foot of ton up braid in 85 pounds, uh, a size one zero eagle wave catfish hook and basically a big long hair, long enough to accommodate basically a whole tin of luncheon meat thereabouts. Um, today I'm just trimming it down a little bit so I can fit it in the hopper on the, on the bait boat because you are allowed to use bait boats on this particular venue. Obviously, because it's a very big bait, I use a stringer needle to mount the big chunk of meat on the hair. And once I've put that on, I put on a little piece of fake corn and then a boilie stop. The reason I put on the bit of fake corn is to stop the boilie stop pulling through the meat because it's quite a soft bait. And that really is it. It doesn't get much simpler and uh, no lead on it because of the weight of the, the hook bait. So it's free lined, so it's absolute minimal resistance, which is why I think it works so well. I know Mike's taken a few moments just to show you one of the rigs he's using. Uh, I'm going to do the same now, uh, just run you briefly through uh, the, one of the rigs that I've opted to use during this session. Um, it's, it's very simple, um, as personally I like to keep things as simple as possible when fishing for catfish. Um, the more complicated you get, the less chance you're going to get of taking, taking fish. You, you'll end up losing half of them anyway. Um, it's essentially a running rig. Um, I opt to fish a boom just to the lead, a nice heavy lead. Reason for that is just if you are fishing in a little bit of thick silt, if a few inches dig in, you're still going to have that run ring nice and free, allow the line to pass through it with no resistance. Um, and again, I've opted to use a ceramic run ring exactly for that reason, minimise resistance and let the fish 
confidently take the bait. Next, onto just a little buffer bead, and probably the most important part of the rig is your polyball float or a dumbbell float. Um, it's where this gets a little bit alien for people that aren't used to fishing for cats or for predators, uh, but it's, it's reminiscent of lots of other things, especially those who are used to fishing a zig float, adjustable zig float. It's a very similar setup. Essentially, you cast your pay line off, and these two poly balls will float to the surface, and that sets your rig depth. Next up, a little bit of tubing just to keep the rig away from the, the float a little bit, just to minimise tangles. A section of heavy monofilament, 30 or 40 pound. Um, I opt to use amnesia because it's, it's you know, nice and straight, it sits nice and, and uh, firmly in the water without a lot of kinking or memory. Uh, down to a, a 1.0 hook. Hook size will depend on your bait. Um, you can fish a multitude of baits using this type of rig with a few slight tweaks. Uh, I'm, as you can see, I'm using a, a pair of leeches at the moment, uh, so I've matched my hook size to my bait. But if you were fishing, for example, a larger live bait, then you could up your hook size and up your float size. And all I've done is literally nick them through, half a little bit of fake corn, just to keep them on the hook to stop them from, from falling off on a cast or if they're caught in a little bit of weed. But you can use a little bit of rubber band or anything like that. So all you're essentially doing is you're looking for those cats that are cruising mid-water up to sort of subsurface. So the length of your monofilament in front of your float is the depth you'll be fishing. Uh, and the idea is the cat will see from, the, from beneath or uh, suspect something's above them, come up, investigate, and before they've known it, they've got the hook in their mouth and fish in the net. As most people know, catfish have got terrible eyesight, but what they do have is an incredible sense of smell. So when you're fishing for cats, the most important thing is you want to draw them in on your spots. And the way you do that is with super smelly, high oil, real stinky bait. So I'm just going to quickly show you what I've been using to sort of bait my areas, what I'm hoping will draw the fish in and get their heads down on my bait. Um, start off, really simple stuff, just marine halibut pellets, a couple, couple of different sizes, eights, ten mils, um, just get some grubbing around. Give it a little mix. Um, and then all I'm going to add is just a matching marine halibut ground bait, just a powder. And then to that, I've got a mix I actually have made up for my match fishing, for method fishing, but it's got Vitalin and all sorts of other goodies in it. Uh, others, lots of other stuff that cat likes and the other good thing about it is it helps bind it all together it helps me get it out there and, and sit on the spots where I want it, to, want it to be so pour a bit of that in and then probably one of the most disgusting parts of making this mackerel now I actually caught these myself last year off the south coast so they've been sitting in my freezer ready for days like today. All you want to do is just take some scissors, get all the blood and guts in there, just chunk them up. The more blood, the more stink, the better. It's potentially easier with a knife, but I've only got scissors to hand. That'll do. Uh, give it a good, get your hands in there, give it a good old mix around, get everything sort of bind into each other, all those juices sort of moving around, start soaking up into the pellets and the other bits and pieces. Uh, and as I said, the sense of smell is incredible, so obvious salmon oil. It's one of those, the smelliest high oil contact things you can use. Uh, it'll really get the fish honing in on your spots. Pour a little bit of that in. Can't really use too much for cats. Again, give it a little move around. And that really is it. And as you can see, just on my hands, all the oil, all the, all the goodness releasing, all the smell, all the attraction, that's what you want. Um, and on top of that, I've got some large, 
they're in fact boilies. They're, they're uh, a high oil, high fish meal content. Uh, it's got blood powder, all sorts of other things in it. Just hand rolled into large sort of pellet shapes, uh, which I can sort of crush up, put in the mix, um, or which I have been doing is using them actually on the, as a hook bait as well. Uh, I've actually again I've glugged these up in a little bit of oil just to add to the attraction. And then, as if there wasn't enough there already, uh, the last thing is just you run the meal boilies. Uh, these are the fish meal boilies that I, I use for my carp fishing. Um, but you know, how many times do cats get caught on carp gear? Uh, my fault was uh, if they're used to picking up boilies, there's a lot of carp anglers on here. Um, stick with that, maybe it could bring them in. Again, you can just crush them up, put them in, or put them in whole. That's it. Right, it's been a hard slog. Fishing's been really difficult. The fish really haven't been interested in a hell of a lot. But we've got one, we've got a proper one. Um, 65 pound, uh, made up. New PB for me. Really gave me the run around uh, two o'clock in the morning, so it's really, really pulled my strings. Uh, I've called Mike in to get on one end of this fish because there's no way I'm going to lift it by myself. Well done, um, mate. Cheers, mate. All right, we'll get up now, show you what we've caught. Covered in catfish slop. <sighs> That's a monster. Prehistoric. Absolutely incredible. To think these fish live in the waters that we're fishing for carp on a week to week basis is absolutely unreal. Now that is incredible. All right, we're gonna get this fish back. Who knows, we might be getting another one yet. I'm just going to hold this fish in the margin a minute. Let it regain a little bit of energy. I feel it starting to bite down on my thumb now. So it's probably, probably getting close. As big as they are and as, as powerful as they are, you have to treat them with respect. Uh, they're fragile fish at the end of the day. Really let them recover. Let them get all the oxygen flowing through the gills again. Give them a little bit of movement. <laughs> Come on. There you go. Whiskers are flaring. There she wants to go. There she goes. Go on. Yes! Get in! Well, come to the end of the session. Um, not the easiest session fishing we've ever had, uh, but we've got our result. We've got, we've got a, a, a big fish, a PB for me. I'm, I'm over the moon. I still haven't really taken it in. It's such a, 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 a huge creature just to see on the bank. Uh, I feel privileged. It's, it was a, 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 a team effort. We really had to work hard, working out what was working, what wasn't working, and, and we got there. Um, you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it was uh, a tough session, as you said, and the cats weren't overly cooperative, as we know can can often be the case, and sometimes it, it can just take that one thing to aggravate them into feeding, which on this particular occasion was a uh, subsurface live bait, and I think uh, that particular one just aggravated that catfish yeah. enough to nab it. Yeah. And you got it on the bank, and uh, I'm chuffed to bits that you got a PB, yeah, mate. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I can't really put it into words. How happy I am, and how how pleased it was. It was to that, like with this session with you, Mike. You know. Well, that's it for today. But it's actually not the end of mine and Mike's catfish adventures. In a few days, we're heading off to the Ebro in Spain, where hopefully we'll be able to get into a few of the real big monsters we know live there. Uh, if we do, we'll we'll try and take the footage on to the end of this. But if not, we'll see you next time, and hopefully we'll be out for some carp. Coming up in the next episode of The Illustrated Angler.